Hi, we're at Abayam Bilingual School. This video is intended to give new teachers an idea of what it's like to uh, work in Kuwait. Come on in. Hello, ladies. What's it like working at BBS with a bilingual program? Well, you really have to be open-minded because you're working with different people from different cultures, different backgrounds. You have to be open-minded to new ideas, take new ideas from everyone and work with what you have. And realize that it's really fun um, learning about their ideas and collaborating with them and sharing and, and focusing on the fact that it's bilingual. So we're learning a lot about different people's perspectives. Hello, Ms. Joanne. What advice would you have for new teachers? Well, being a teacher of 37 years, my advice to you is, first of all, get your procedures down. Make them rote so they know them backwards and frontwards. Also, when you decide to have policies of behavior, make sure that they're part of that policy, that they help to create it. Make sure you show it in somewhere in the room and refer to it regularly. Have a silent signal so when everything's chaotic that you maybe raise your hand, they know that they should be in their seats or counting one to three or something like that. Something that they know that they should be doing when that happens. Now let's take a look at what students have to say. Let's see what they're looking for in a teacher. Hey ladies, what advice do you have for new teachers? Um, first thing that they don't be mean and they understand the kids and they treat them in a good way and uh, they just be fun with them, like their parents, like they're part of their family and uh, the kids will really like them. Um, for me, I think first thing is to treat the students like your own kids and to always be fair with grades. Um, never, if you like a person, put an A and if you don't like that person, put an F. And, um, to not always be serious, at least once a day, uh, say a joke to have uh, to put a smile on the students' faces. So, Ms. Christian, what advice do you have for new teachers? I would say be really prepared for a culture shock. It doesn't really matter how much you've traveled or where you've been. Things are going to be different, and you have to just, you know, take time to adjust and work through it. What just... advice would you have for new teachers? starting their first year in Kuwait in the curriculum department. Uh, so I'm a curriculum developer and I work with uh, Ms. Carol, who's a curriculum coordinator. Um, we ask that teachers document everything on Rubicon uh, Atlas. So once you start your school year, it would be a good idea to go on and see uh, what your group uh, within your department and the grade, specific grade level has worked on over the past few years. That could be a good start for you uh, to know what what what's you know what you're going to be working. What advice would you have for a new teacher, Mr. Jose? Um, well, uh, for example, I have it was brand new. The culture, everything was brand new. Names, I had a hard time with names because I have 84 students new, so I had to memorize faces and names. So I took down the last year's pictures, looked them up, and made my class list. And I looked at it every day to memorize names. That help? It helped tremendously. Then I was able to have parent conferences uh, and connect that name to the to the child to be able to talk properly about the parents about that student success. Good advice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What do you consider a good teacher? Uh, she is kind. Teachers who is kind. Who. Uh, who doesn't blame me for stuff? Mm -hmm. And if if I'm naughty and she's and she's she thinks that I'm the only te I'm the only person who's naughty to not um, to not look at me only because maybe other people are going to do stuff wrong stuff. Dr. Mohammed, you were just telling me about um, good teachers and what they do with the students. Can you tell me about this teacher that just left the library? Yeah, this teacher is one of our best teachers in the school and uh, I know about her that at the beginning of the year she set up the rules, the instructions that she will, uh, the rules that she wants to uh, set up and maintain till the end of the year. So uh, she set up these rules and the students follow it up if there's any uh, distractions or any uh, let's say violation to these rules there would be consequences and um, she... I like science and and I like to learn new facts 
about like the plants and about the about space and stuff like that and the parts of people what is inside our bones yeah that um, you taught in Ireland and now you've taught in Kuwait for a couple of years. What's the biggest difference that you've seen? I think the biggest difference amongst the children is that these guys love to talk and they're very, very sociable. So trying to integrate that love of talking into your classroom in a positive way is something that has really just fallen into place with me this year. So I found um, it's successful to give them ample time to chat with each other. So you might discuss something for five minutes and then let them turn and talk to a partner or do group work. Um, and that kind of keeps their desire to talk focused onto the topic at hand rather than them chatting amongst themselves. Who was your favourite teacher and why? Miss Hazard because she was very really funny and she doesn't chat at us. Okay. Number one advice for new teachers? My advice for the new teacher to be patient. Uh, to put inside his mind that if he wants to work in Al Bayan really to be patient he cannot learn or have everything in the in the first few weeks the systems is really different uh, the arabic student here is really to deal with them is a little bit different so mr zach um you as athletic director you work with all the divisions elementary middle and high school what are the main differences that you see within the divisions um, you know, one thing that you have to understand is that this culture is very vocal, so you're going to have students that just seem like they can't stop talking. It's not that they're being disrespectful, they're just a very vocal culture, and you find that at all three levels. Elementary, the kids are very high energy. Middle school, they're, they're high energy and it's a bit, it's a bit chaotic, but um, it's because of the nature of the kids, they're out, you know, expanding their horizons and learning who they are. And then high school is pretty calm, pretty laid back. Thank you. Now this is all work. You have to think about what you're going to do outside of work. In order to live a healthy lifestyle, you have to take care of yourself and live a balanced life. Hi. My advice to new teachers coming to Kuwait would be to learn the school, learn your apartment, and then get out of it. Go out, meet people. There are so many things to do in Kuwait. There's scuba diving, there's sports, softball, baseball. There's the theater. There are many um, community theater groups. We're a part of them. But if you don't get out of your humdrum routine of apartments to school and live a little, you become very bored and very stressed out. So I would say to start embracing the community and get out there. It's, it's a really good time. There's a lot to do. I am here at the BBS gym, as you can see. It's a very, very nice facility for working out. This is available for all BBS staff. Um, and here is uh, the gym manager, Ahmed Fuda. Yes, come and do it. Hello. My advice for all those who are coming here is just be patient and ask a lot of questions. Keep in mind that we are all here to help you to hold your hand and to go through this journey together. Be patient, be organized, have good classroom management. The kids will be fine and you will be fine. We're all in this together and we will sail together.